this video I'm going to show you how to set up the nav menu widget. So I have the nav menu right here and the first choice that I can see is the choice of which menu to display. So I'll choose this one and these are menus that are created on WordPress and they are drawn into this widget. Next I can choose horizontal, vertical and drop down. I'll show you examples of the other layouts in a little while. And I can choose to align it to any side or spread it throughout the column. So let's align it to the right. Pointer, this is the mark that appears on hover and when the item is active. So this example shows underline. Let's show another example, which is framed. And you can play around with the different pointers. Each pointer has a set of animations. This is the fade one and you can also choose a different one like grow. Let's stick to fade. Uh, I also have a sub menu indicator. This it's li the little angle icon right here and I can choose to show a plus and any of the other sub menu and indicators. Next, we have the mobile drop down setting. Now, if I want the mobile menu to be displayed on tablet devices and lower, I choose tablet. And this way, when I switch to tablet, I see the mobile menu. However, if I choose mobile devices and lower, it means the tablet will still show uh, the regular desktop menu. And only if I go to the mobile view, then I will see the mobile menu. So let's switch back to tablet and tablet breakpoint. So now when I open the menu, it opens in the same column. But what if I want it to show in the full width? This is why I have the full width option. And when I switch it on, the menu items take up the whole screen and are on top of the section below it. If I close the menu, it is still situated in the right column. So for the menu, I can choose the alignment of the menu items either to center or aside and have the toggle button either show the burger or already display the menu items. I can also show the toggle alignment to the left, center or right. Next, I want to show you the styling options, so I'll switch back to desktop view and go to the style tab. I can change the menu item style for normal, hover and active state. To understand what each state means, I'll change the active state to green for the text color and pointer color. Now you see that the home button that I'm currently on is green, while the other links are blue. We can also set the typography style and change the pointer width to make the pointer here more wide. And I can change the horizontal padding and this changes the width of the pointer. And to explain how it works, if I reduce this to zero and then increase the space between the items, I can see that the pointer width it is exactly the same width as the text. I can also change the vertical padding which affects the distance between the pointer and uh, the text. So if I reduce it, you see that the pointer is really close to the text. Next, we have the drop down menu. Now this menu affects both the sub menu and the mobile menu. So to see it in action, I'll switch to tablet view. Now I can change the normal and hover state and change the text color, background color, typography, add a border type and border radius, set a box shadow, change the horizontal padding, which is the distance between the text and the sides, and vertical padding, affecting the height of the whole menu. I can set the divider, right now it's dotted, I can set it to solid, change its color and border width. And for the whole menu, 
change the distance from the top. And let's switch the toggle button to burger and then we can set the toggle button design for both normal and hover. I can change the color, the background color, create this negative effect, change the size, the border width and the border radius. Here are some other examples of the kind of menus you can create with this widget. For vertical menus, I recommend using either background or text pointers, because if I choose, let's say, underline, it doesn't really look quite as good. This type of menu is very popular for design and fashion related sites. Next is an example of a drop down menu that is great for the minimalistic view. Notice that for content and style, we only have the option for drop down and not for main menu. This is because we only set the drop down menu. Here is another example of the vertical menu. Now, this effect is easily done by setting the size to a large size and choosing a color with opacity and on content setting the animation to grow and then you get this nice semi-transparent effect. Finally we have this horizontal menu and I want to show you how you can quickly change the effect by reducing the vertical padding and increasing the border radius. I can quickly turn it into sort of button menu. I hope by now you better understand how to use the nav menu widget in Elementor. For more tutorials, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Until next time, this is Ben from Elementor.